Hello and welcome to our lesson on kites and trapezoids. So kites and trapezoids are a part of the quadrilateral family. They have four sides, uh, much like all the other parallelograms we have been talking about in this lesson. Uh, however, kites and trapezoids are not parallelograms. They do not have opposite parallel sides, opposite congruent sides. Um, but they are quadrilaterals, so they do still fall into the quadrilateral family. So, so characteristics of a kite are that they have perpendicular diagonals and that their consecutive sides are congruent. Um, so you might see in the example that we'll be doing later, uh, the two shorter sides here are congruent. The two, um, longer sides here are congruent. So those are the important pieces of information for a kite. It is not a parallelogram. However, the diagonals are perpendicular, much like a square and a rhombus, and the consecutive sides are congruent. So example A says if F G H E is a kite and F G is 6x plus 28, uh, F E is x plus 13, find e h, which is 2x plus 50. Now, what they gave us was two of the congruent sides and then information for the side they want us to find. The thing here that they gave us is they gave us f g and f e. f g and f e are congruent. That means they're also equal. So that means we can do fg 6x plus 28 is equal to fe x plus 13. We subtract x from both sides. We get 5x plus 28 equals 13. Subtract 28 from both sides. That gives us 5x equals negative 15. Divide both sides by 5. And that gives us x equals negative 3. Now, they want to know what eh is. And all we have to do is use x equals negative 3 in eh. So eh is equal to 2x plus 50. So it's equal to 2 times negative 5 plus 50, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, negative 10 plus 50 is 40, so EH is 40. So in the kites, the main thing that they'll give you is they'll talk about um, the congruent sides and they'll ask you to figure out which pairs of the sides are congruent. Um, they will usually have to tell you which pairs of the sides are congruent, so you'll just have to notice what they labeled. Uh, the other thing they'll ask you is they'll refer to the diagonals. So the diagonals here are perpendicular. So they'll, they might label this middle point. So let me just give it a name. Let's call it P for this. And they might say angle FPG is 3x plus 12. Find x. So all you'll have to do is remember that FPG is a 90 degree angle. All right, next let's talk about trapezoids. So trapezoids are a quadrilateral uh, that have one pair of parallel sides. So let's write that down. All right, so a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides, which are called the bases of the trapezoid. 
and one pair of non-parallel sides, which are called the legs of the trapezoid. The trapezoid also has two pairs of base angles. So the base angles pairs are the two angles that are connected by each base. So I'm going to draw a picture down here um, of a generic trapezoid. So this is a trapezoid because these two sides are parallel. These would be the bases. And usually you'll call it base 1 and base 2. The non-parallel sides would be the legs. So this would be a leg and this would be a leg because they're not parallel. The pairs of base angles, so this angle and this angle would be one pair of base angles because they're connected by base 1. This angle down here and this angle over here would be another pair of base angles because those two are connected by base 2. In trapezoids, we have a line called a median. A median is also called the MIG segment of a trapezoid. It is the segment that connects the midpoints of the legs. And it is parallel to the bases. It is also equal to half of the bases added together. So we've got a couple things here to write down. So the median is the segment that connects the midpoints of the legs. It is parallel to the bases. And the median is equal to adding the bases together and dividing by 2. Next, we have an isosceles trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid is a specific kind of trapezoid that has congruent legs. An isosceles trapezoid is most likely what you guys will think of when you think of a trapezoid. Um, but it is important to note that in a trapezoid, the legs do not have to be congruent. So we could have a trapezoid that looks like this. So you'll notice that this leg is a little bit longer than this one. But in isosceles trapezoid, the legs will be congruent. So I did my best to make one that looks like it's congruent. So these two sides are congruent. Uh, the base angles will be congruent with their pair. So that means these top angles will be congruent with each other and these bottom angles will be congruent with each other. So they're not all congruent, but the, pa the individual pairs are congruent. And then the last part here is that the diagonals of the trapezoid are congruent. So if we have the diagonals here, these are congruent.
So let's do some more labeling to just kind of help you guys. So remember, this is specifically an isosceles trapezoid. This would be a base. This would be a base. This would be a leg. This would be a leg. All right, let's do some examples. The basket shows an isosceles trapezoid. If JML is 130 degrees, so let's label that. JML is 130 degrees. KN is 6.7 feet, so K to N is right here. LN is 3.6 feet. Find M, J, K, and the length of K, M. So what we need to do here is we need to apply uh, quadrilateral rules and the isosceles trapezoid rules. So, um, the first thing that would be easiest to do would be the diagonals. So for the diagonals, because it's an isosceles trapezoid, these two shorter pieces are congruent, these two longer pieces are congruent. So that means if uh, LN, like they gave us, is 3.6 feet, that means MN, which is what we need to get the entirety of KM, is also 3.6 feet. So that means KM is equal to KN plus MN. KN is 6.7 feet. MN is 3.6 feet. This would give us 10.3 feet. Now, the other part here is a little bit harder. So, what we need to do here is we need to take into account that this trapezoid is a quadrilateral. So, what we are allowed to assume at least is that JML, this base angle here and the other base angle are both 130 degrees. So that means these two angles are 130 degrees. We also can assume that this top smaller angle uh, at J is congruent to the angle up here at K. If we add, and I'm just going to call them by their letters. Now they use three to indicate that they're talking about the big angle, but for the sake of having less writing, if we do angle M plus angle L plus angle J plus angle K, it is a quadrilateral, a four-sided shape. And if you refer back to the initial polygons lesson for this chapter, we know that this shape should be 360 degrees. We have established that angle M is 130 degrees and angle L is 130 degrees. We don't know angle J. We don't know angle K. What we do know, though, is that J and K are a pair of base angles in this trapezoid, which means they are congruent. They are the same measure. So I'm going to replace them with the same unknown variable. They are both going to be x. We don't know them, but they're going to be the same. So 130 plus 130 is 260, plus x plus x is 2x. If I subtract 260 from both sides, that is going to give us 2x 
equals 100 divided by 2, x equals 50. So that means both of these angles here are 50 degrees, which is what we want because that would tell us MJK, which is this angle here. So MJK is 50 degrees. MN is the MIG segment of trapezoid HJKL, where HJ is 12, and LK is 26. What is MN? So you'll notice here they showed us that it's the MIG segment by showing it us that it's the midpoint of the two lakes. They told us the length of the two bases. So mid segment is equal to base plus base over two. So that means MN, the mid segment, is equal to our two bases are HJ and LK. So HJ plus LK over 2. That means we can replace the number. So it's going to be equal to 12 plus 26 over 2. 12 plus 26 is 38 over 2. 38 divided by 2 is 19. All right, WXYZ is an isosceles trapezoid with median JK. So you'll see here, this is a trapezoid on its side. So this shows us that the vertical sides can be the parallel sides too for trapezoids. It doesn't have to be top and bottom, but these two parallel sides are the bases. So this would be a base, this would be a base. And then these are the legs. They tell us it's an isosceles trapezoid. So that means that YKZ, YK, uh, YZ is congruent to XW or WX. So they're equal. Find XY if JK is 18 and WZ is 25. So here we're applying the mid segment rule as well. So mid segment or median, they mean the same thing. Equals base plus base over 2. Our median is JK, so that means JK equals xy plus wz over 2. This time they gave us jk and wz. So we're still going to use the information, but we're, our work's going to be a little bit different. So 18 equals xy plus 25 over 2. So what we want to do here is we want to get rid of this fraction. So to do that we're going to multiply both sides by 2 first. So that's going to give us 2 times 18 is 36 equals on this right hand side they'll cancel so xy plus 25. Now all we have to do is subtract 25 from both sides and that gives us that xy is equal to 11. All right, 
Example E is just like example D, they just worded it differently. So I want you to go ahead and try this question. All right, so you should have gotten that HJ is 58. So you'll see I have the work here for that. That is it for our kite and trapezoid lesson. If you have any questions, put them in at the end of this video.